The, the policy of separate development, as I understand it, uh, has at this point evolved, roughly speaking, as follows, that about 14% of South Africa uh, is reserved for the Bantu stands. It's not a question of being reserved for them. That is where the mistake is made all along the line. To interpret this situation, you must know something of the history. Yes, I wish you'd tell us something about this it. country mm. and its people. It so happens that more or less, uh, for all practical purposes, the time that the whites moved up from the Cape, the blacks moved down from the middle of Africa, and they settled certain portions of what is now the Republic of South Africa. The Tosa settled the Transkei, the Zulu settled portions of Natal, the Tswana settled portions of Western Transvaal, the Sutu settled portions of Northern Transvaal, the Venda settled another portion <coughs> of, Ven of Northern Transvaal, and so I can go on. And they claimed certain land which to this day they still possess. So it wasn't a question that it was reserved for them. They settled that land and they've got it to this very day. But apart from that, and the whites settled the rest. But apart from the land that they initially settled, and which today is still their land, in 1936, the then United Party, under the leadership of General Herzog as Prime Minister and General Smuts as Deputy Prime Minister, they passed a law that saying that in addition to that land which the black peoples originally settled, the whites at their expense should add seven and a quarter million morgan of land. And that land is still being bought up today. As a matter of fact, about a little over six million Morgan of the seven and a quarter has already been bought, and we are now buying up the last remaining a million and a quarter of Morgan of land. So <coughs> your point is that historically, uh, that land which is theirs continues to be theirs. Continues and, and to the be theirs, and we didn't mm -hmm. put them there and, and say to them, look, that is where you must live. Uh, they settled the, that land, and they picked that land and let me say so from an agricultural point of view and from a rainfall point of view it is the best land in south africa mm -hmm. well but it is true that um, i think the figure is two million people have actually been moved correct during the past 15 years told not to go other than where they would like to be no it's not only black people that have been moved whites are being moved as well i've just tried to explain to you that whites have to evacuate no less than seven and a quarter million Morgan of land. And blacks are put on that land. Well, essentially... Well-developed <coughs> well developed farms and uh, well-developed land. Well, uh, essentially, as I understand it, you, you view the situation in South Africa roughly uh, as follows, that the black uh, population are your guests, that they actually belong in the ancient territories to the extent that they live and work in your territories, they must uh, 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 accept that they are not uh, first-class citizens. Is you can more or less saying? equate them to the guest workers in Europe. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only the black workers from Tswana land or Venda land or Zulu land that come to work in South Africa. Independent, the citizens of independent African countries come to South Africa to look for work for the simple reason that their own countries can't employ them. You have more or less 90,000 Malawians working in this country. And if we were to say to Malawi tomorrow, and we've never had anything to do with Malawi whatsoever, it's a country, as you know, situated far away from us. <coughs> if we were to say to them tomorrow, I'm awfully sorry I can't accommodate your people any longer, you must take them back their economy will be very, very seriously hurt. The same applies to Lesotho, an independent country, member of you know. If we were to say to Lesotho, we are sorry we can't employ their 105,000 people, 
working in this country at the moment, you can well imagine what will happen to the economy of Lesotho. Well, and the same <coughs> applies to Botswana, and the same applies to Swaziland, and the same applies to any other of the African countries who come to South Africa to look for work. Well, but Mr. Foster, what you are, what you are saying is uh, either a commentary on the paradise of South Africa or on the misery of the countries they flee from. No, it's not a question of misery either or a paradise either for this matter. It is simply that as far as the whole of Africa is concerned, it's got a backlog <coughs> in development. Uh, to understand that, again, one must look at their history. But the point is, and I'm not saying it in a derogatory sense at all, but for generations to come, on account of the fact that uh, they multiply by over 3%, as compared with the, with hours of little over one percent. For generations to come, their difficulty will consequently be that they cannot create sufficient avenues of employment. And therefore, for generations to come, and I want to make it very clear that I'm not saying it in a, in a derogatory sense at all, but in a practical, realistic sense, their main export will be labor because they can't employ their own people. And it so happens that until that time that they can, that they have developed to such an extent that they can employ their own people, they <coughs> will be forced to look to South Africa and other countries to employ their people whom they cannot employ themselves. 